Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is happy and healthy and doing well and getting out there to exercise. So in this video I wanted to share with you a very interesting, actually exciting development that comes to us from uh, some researchers up in Canada at McMaster's and uh, University of Waterloo. No, not Napoleon's Waterloo, the, the Waterloo up in Canada. Uh, and they have developed a very interesting patch that can be used for measuring glucose and lactate and any other metabolites that exist in the interstitial fluid. Now the cool thing about what the researchers up in Canada have done, which I think many of you might appreciate, is what they've put together is much less invasive than the current existing CGM meters. You will know, of course, that sort of existing devices out on the market, whether it's Dexcom or the Libre, the Freestyle Libre, use uh, a needle that is made out of metal and is actually relatively long, which no, not everybody appreciates, right? And so what these guys and gals have done is that they've created a microarray, uh, which is made out of a gel, a hydrogel. Well, and, and the problem that this addresses is that metal needles are really not particularly compatible with skin in that skin moves around, it's flexible, and so metal needles are always at risk of either being broken or somewhat displaced, and whenever they're moved around, rather whenever the skin moves around them, that can negatively impact the measurements and the values that we get. And so those are really the problems that they're trying to get around here. And so what they've developed is really an array of microneedles, and they're made out of, and uh, it's, uh, it's complicated, it's methacrylated hyaluronic acid, M-E-H-A. I will spell it out here for you, but it really doesn't matter. And you may have heard of hydrolonic hydro acid because it's being used currently for dermal fillers, it's used in eye drops, it used for various tissue engineering applications and has been for a long time. The problem with it per se is that it's, it lacks rigidity. So by itself you could not create a needle out of it or a micro needle that could be uh, rigid enough to pierce the skin and access the, the ISF. Now fortunately there is a solution for it, which is what they've applied, and that is you can add rigidity by modifying it with methacrylate, uh, which is what they've done, and so that results in a set of microneedles that are biocompatible, somewhat flexible, porous, and yet sharp and rigid enough to be stuck into the skin and acts as the ISF, but not nearly as long and not nearly as rigid as a metal needle would be. This is what it looks like, and for size, uh, the line is three millimeters long, so that should hopefully give you some perspective on the scale that we're talking about here. So next, having manufactured the micro needles, they connected them to electromechanical aptomer-based sensors. And aptomers are simply single strands of RNA or DNA sequence, and uh, they can target specific molecules, whether it's uh, lactose or glucose or any number of other molecules that one might choose to design them for. And this is what uh, the device, or the aptalyzer as they call it, uh, looks like. Now, as you would expect them to do to make sure that this whole setup worked, they tested it. And they tested it on healthy mice and diabetic rats. And they tested it for glucose and for lactate. Uh, they attached uh, the number of patches to each animal, I believe. And the results from their specific testing was that it looked, uh, that it worked better for uh, tracking lactate then it worked for tracking glucose over time. Now, I'm not particularly concerned about that. I think it's just a question of the specific circumstances and maybe the algorithms that they may or may not be using. Um, what I think it does is that it proves the concept and effect that you can make these microneedles the way they made them 
have aptomer-based biosensors if you choose to do that, or you could have any other biosensors for that matter, and that it actually accesses the ISF and can pull it up to the biosensors and then can measure it. And obviously, there is always um, some work to be done in terms of the algorithm, some AI that can be added to it to make sure that it, uh, it confirms closer to the measurement that you would get from uh, you know, more traditional measurement methods. So that's a problem that can be solved. And for those of you who are interested in the specific data, here is a picture. And I think the top line is the glucose reading of the aptalyzer. The next line is the glucose meter reading. And the two bottom lines are the lactate readings from either the lactate kit or once again the aptalyzer. Now, as you would expect, those microneedles leave a little bit of an imprint on the rat's uh, skin, but the imprint goes away about 20 minutes or so. You would obviously expect something similar to happen in human skin. And once again, I would expect it to go away in exactly the similar manner. You would not want to put it in exactly the same place uh, day in and day out, and week in and wake out. You probably want to move it around a little bit, but you know. That's a small price to pay for having a patch like this, I think. Now, these patches obviously have a long way to go before they're commercialized, if they're ever commercialized. But nonetheless, I think it's a great idea. I would personally much rather have a small patch with uh, flexible microneedles like this than be sticking metal needles and longer metal needles into my arms. And so... Kudos to the Canadian researchers. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. I hope they keep working on it, and hopefully it will be commercialized at some point in time. I will uh, let you know uh, what happens to the extent that I can figure it out over time. For those of you who are interested in the details, I have uh, I've a link to the research paper in the description below, so feel free to find it there. And uh, with that, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you find it useful. Give me a thumbs up and comment if you do. And uh, yeah, be well. We'll talk to you soon. Take good care. Bye-bye.